Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling bright and blessed this morning, in love with Jesus and full of his spirit. Now, we're continuing our review through the book of Hosea, but before we begin this morning, I want to say that I have heard from many of you, and I can't express my gratitude, my thankfulness for your prayers and for the way that you reach out. I so much enjoy hearing from you, and I want you to know that you are deeply loved and appreciated. Sometimes I may underestimate the reach and the impact that this ministry has on many of you, the viewers. Several of you have told me that you have gone back and literally watched hundreds of these videos. And I'm so grateful that the Lord is using his word to impact your lives. It is my intention through this ministry to reach you with the word of God, to aid you in your journey. And so if there's anything upon your heart, if there's something that you want us to discuss, if there's a question that you have, if there's something that you are wrestling with, please make it known to me and I will do my best to address it. Well, with that being said, this morning our text is in Hosea chapter 3. Now, this is a very interesting passage because this is prophetical in many ways. For instance, if you'll look at the last verse, the last sentence in chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. So in this allegorical view of what Hosea is actually enduring in his day-to-day -day life, there's a prophetical statement here that concerns the last days. And so let's look and see what that may be. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto me, says Hosea, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. Why? Because Israel is an adulteress. You and I have been adulteresses in the eyes of the Lord on many occasions. When we look unto the things of this world, we attach ourselves to the things of this world, the ways of this world, the practices of this world. He wants our full attention, friends. It says, they look to other gods and they love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an omer of barley and for a half omer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So I also be for thee. And so the Lord says, as you show me your faithfulness, I will show you my faithfulness. I will be true in relationship to you. You be true in relationship to me. Verse 4, for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Now I want you to think about the last 2,000 years. The temple of the Jewish people was destroyed in 70 AD, some 40 years after Jesus left this earth. And this prophetical statement is indicating that when it says the children of Israel will abide many days without a king. Well, they have for 2,000 years. They will go without a prince, without a sacrifice. There is no temple, therefore there can be no sacrifice for 2,000 years. They will be without an image, without an ephod. This is the breastplate that the priest wore upon his chest. And so because there is no temple, there is no ephod and without teraphim. But afterwards, says the Lord, after the last days, during the last days, after this period where they have been separated from the things that are most precious to them, you have to think about the Jewish people. The temple and all that was therein was their most prized possessions. And they have been without these for 2,000 years. And, and the Lord says, afterward, the children of Israel shall return. They will seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. And this is what Romans chapter 11 speaks of in verse 1 when it says, Has God cast away his people? God forbid. Verse 2, God has not cast away his people which he foreknew. Verse 8, according as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see, ears that should not hear. Verse 11, through their fall, through their slumber, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. 
Verse 25, blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Verse 26, all Israel shall be saved. And that's what's being addressed in Hosea here, that there's a time, a period of slumber for the Jewish people so that the gospel can be taken, the message of the Lord Jesus can be taken to the Gentiles, the pagan nations. Yet at the end of those days, when the fullness of the Gentiles come in to the kingdom, God will drop the scales from the eyes of the Jewish people. They will realize they crucified their king, their Messiah, their promised one, and they'll return unto the Lord with great weeping and sorrow. He says in chapter 4, verse 1, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord, Hosea. Hear the word of the Lord, viewer. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, there is no mercy, there is no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwells therein shall languish with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea shall be taken away." Yet, because of this, let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. And notice verse 6, friends, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see, there's plenty of teaching throughout the land, throughout the world, on the internet, but so much of that teaching caters to the itching ears of men. And so you have to dig very hard. You have to search very diligently to find real truth. You might have to sift through thousands of videos in order to find the one whom is preaching and teaching the word of God. It's kind of like that old saying that says practice makes perfect. Well, that's not true. Because if you're practicing wrong, you're going to be perfectly wrong. Perfect practice makes perfect. And so perfect knowledge makes one wise. It's not that the land is perishing, the people are perishing because of lack of information, but for lack of real biblical truth. And many of them, when they come upon it, resist it because oftentimes the truth hurts. But if you have a disease in your body, you're going to go to the hospital. That may be a painful ordeal. But ultimately, you're going to feel better. And it's the same way with the Word of God. When we come to the Word of God and we read and study the Word of God, initially, it may be a painful experience. But as the Word of God gets in us and heals us, ultimately, we're going to feel better. And so again, in the text, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, do you remember in the book of Amos, chapter 8 and verse 11, it says, behold, the days are coming, saith the Lord God. I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a famine of water, but a famine of the words of the Lord. And friends, these are the days that we live in. Many come in the name of Jesus, but they're not teaching the true teachings of Jesus. The verse continues and says, you've rejected knowledge. You've rejected the truth. Why? Because the truth rejects and despises everything that you hold dear. As the Bible tells us, we must be renewed by the renewing of our mind. We must change our way of thinking. And we must conform ourselves to the word of God and not our own opinion, not our own traditions, not our own feelings, not our own upbringing, and certainly not following the ways of our hearts. And so God says, because you reject my truth, I will reject you. You will be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget thy children. Proverbs one twenty four says, Because I have called and you refused, I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. You have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Verse 28, they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they will not find me. They hated knowledge. They did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all of my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. In other words, you reap what you sow. 
Can you hear the heart cry of the Almighty friend? He's pleading, he's begging with the people then, and he's pleading and he's begging with us now. Forego your evil ways. Flee your wicked desires. Turn from the wayward path. Seek my truth. Abide in my counsel. Sit under and accept my reproof, my correction. Then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Oh, hallelujah, friends. What a wonderful promise if we would only listen, if we would only obey. Search your heart this morning, friends. Allow his spirit to examine you closely. And if there's anything that the Lord would find displeasing, bow in humble surrender and repentance and let this day be the first day of the rest of your life. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that you've been blessed this morning through the word of the Lord. I pray his spirit is having his desire in your heart. I pray that you are conforming your life to his word and that each and every moment of each and every day, your journey takes you one step closer toward the Lord Jesus and away from this world. Now, may your day be blessed today and may you experience all the pleasures that come from knowing him and from being known by him. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you in the name of Jesus, and I'll see you on the next video.